Institution of Engineers, Kerala State Center, IEEE Kerala Chapter, Computer Society of India, Trivandrum Chapter, Project Management Institute, Kerala Chapter, Internet Society, Trivandrum Chapter, Vakka Malavi Foundation Trust, Trivandrum, and IEEE Engineering in Medicine and Biology, Kerala Chapter. Today with us, we have Dr. Ramlada Marimutha, who is a senior life member of uh, and the founder chair of uh, Madras IEEE Human uh, Engineering Affinity Group. And she is currently the professor at the IT department of Anna University. And she'll be taking us through her webinar on assistive technology, a pathway to meaningful engineering. And we really look forward to hearing a lot from you, ma'am. And uh, as we move on, I would like to request Bhagishri VS YEEE to do the welcome address. Can we have you, Bhagishri? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, Fida, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Those who try their best shall have victory, while those who, those who try with effort deserve victory. Good evening, everyone. I warmly welcome all of you to the 32nd webinar of Inter Society Weekly Webinar Series. The topic for today's webinar is Assistive Technology, a Pathway to Meaningful Engineering. Anything we can do to make a product better and help someone else be more productive is the right thing to do. The COVID-19 crisis has affected societies and economies all around the globe and is bound to permanently reshape our world as it continues to unfold. Undoubtedly, the necessity to bring about new insights into creating a better life for our society arises. To talk about this topic with immense pleasure, let me welcome Dr. Ramrata Marimuttu, a professor of IT department, Anna University. Welcome, ma'am. Next. Ma'am. I would like to welcome Professor Sunita PV, Treasurer of IEEE Kerala section to the session. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Next, I would like to welcome Dr. Krishna Kumar, sir, from Project Management Institute Kerala chapter to the session. Welcome, sir. Next, I would like to welcome Harindra Lal, sir, from IEEE and all other eminent personalities gathered here to this session. I also welcome Fida Fatima, MC for today's webinar and all other participants to this event. Hope you all enjoyed. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Over to Fida, the moderator. Fida, are you there? Shall I go ahead? Uh, sorry, ma'am. Actually, uh, I think okay, Fida you less. Okay. okay, so you can invite Sunida. Okay, sir. So. Uh, so, uh, next, I would like to welcome uh, the Treasurer of IEEE Kerala section, Sunita BB Ma'am, to introduce a speaker. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Pagasri. And uh, hi, uh, good evening and good day to one and all. And uh, I am privileged to welcome or introduce our Damarada Ma'am to this August audience. Uh, actually, she is very close to IEEE Kerala section. And we have been uh, associating with her for many years in many ways. And uh, we know that she has done uh, a lot of socially relevant projects, uh, especially in the area of assistive technology. And uh, uh, I will uh, read some of her, I read a brief bio of her. Um, okay. Uh, Dr. Amalada Marimutu has been in teaching for more than three decades and has published six technical books and more than 40 research papers in international conference and journals. She also guides the students in developing unique solutions for social problems like special needs and women empowerment. She has delivered lectures on assistive technology in universities and conferences all over the world and was invited to the Google headquarters, Mountain View, uh, California, to deliver a speech on her research in assistive technology for people with special needs. Dr. Marimuttu is a senior member of IEEE and founder chair of Madras IEEE Women in Engineering Affinity Group. She was Art and V coordinator for 2008 to 10 uh, and chair the IEEE Women in Engineering Committee for uh, 2011 to 12. Uh, she launched an exclusive project, Sangamam, for the transfer of technology to rural areas. Based on her work to improve the quality of life for the rural society, she was awarded the IEEE MGA Achievement Award. 2008, the Lifetime Achiever Award by the Lions Club International, 2009, and the Mender Award by the Secretariat for Disabled, the Government of Tamil Nadu in 2009, IEEE MGA Leadership Award, 2012, and ABI Change Agent Award, 2012. 
She was awarded the Sisters Pass It On Award 2014 by the Anita Borg Institute of Women and Technology. She also won the We Inspiring Member of the Year Award 2016 from IEEE Women in Engineering Committee. A lot of accolades, ma'am. Anything left? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you, so, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> we are we are eagerly waiting to hear from you, ma'am. Oh, thank, thank you, you so thank much. You much. Shall I start you, now? Ma uh, yeah, ma'am. Now it's over to you, ma'am. Ramlata, ma'am, can. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Kerala section. Every one of uh, the Kerala section. Uh, members and non-members are uh, friends of mine. As Sunita Ma'am said, we have been associated with Kerala section for uh, uh, nearly 10 years or more, uh, it should be. And uh, uh, I have always found that uh, uh, being nearer to uh, Tamil Nadu, it is easier to uh, collaborate with Kerala section on all of my activities. Uh, so you will find that uh, in many of my activities, uh, uh, I was invited to the Kerala section and I have invited the Kerala section people also to my uh, place. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the assistive technology, a pathway to meaningful engineering, which, uh, which I would say that um, I have been experiencing it. So this uh, presentation is uh, actually an experience of mine. So I hope that uh, uh, everyone will be interested in following it if uh, you find it uh, really meaningful. When uh, you have a pathway to meaningful engineering, I think it's very enjoyable. And also, um, it also gives us a lot of confidence. So I'm, I hope that the younger generation will be able to follow it. So first, let us talk about the quality of life. The quality of life, as we know, have many facets. It can be social, environmental, physical. There are so many things. But if you see, do we have the quality of life, the best quality of life in everything? If you calculate that, how do we calculate it? All the people all over the world should have uh, education. Then they have the quality of life called education. So if you take that kind of calculation, we miserably fail. And that kind of calculation has been done by somebody else. And you can see that the best quality of life has been awarded to some of the countries. There is a list of the countries who are striving for the best quality of life, but not everything. They are striving for something to give the best quality of life for their people. For example, Norway, they have the best quality of life in education, paid jobs, and longevity. If you take Switzerland, it is lowest unemployment is called best quality of life. So if you take uh, this kind of uh, uh, calculation for the quality of life, we really miserably fail in achieving the best quality of life all over the world, even the topmost powers, they are not able to bring the best quality of life for their people in overall sense, which means that as engineers, we have so many opportunities to improve this quality of life for the people. And so that gives us a power where you can employ your own technology to bring the quality of life to a higher level, I won't say best quality of life, but at least to a higher level for the people, at least around you, if not for the whole world, at least around you. So what do we mean by special needs? Every one of us have the basic needs, which is food, water, and shelter. But these basic needs become for some of the people as special needs itself. You can see the lady trying to get some water. It is not even clean, some water, and they're going to use it for um, drinking as well as cooking. And you can see some of the places where some uh, epidemic has occurred or pandemic has occurred and how the people are struggling. 
and in some of the places people don't even have a proper housing a proper shelter and no electricity that is also considered to be a necessity right now and all these become special needs and i have included this dolphin tail too because i thought that the the family who is trying to bring out this dolphin uh, to take up the life after he has lost his fin it was really inspiring when a family can um, help a dolphin to take up their life the quality of life can be improved for a dolphin there are so many people who don't even have shelter and the basic needs like water and this gives us a lot of opportunity um to provide something through our technology to bring the basic needs of uh, these people which is considered to be special needs by them so i've thought about this as a social innovation and on the point of uh, uh, the education point of view if we take this special needs and try to um, connect them with the technology we can bring out so many social innovations and how do we do it identify a real problem first identify a community nearby and find out whether they they have a need and if they have a need whether it is really a problem and probably all over the world there are so many communities who have the same kind of problem which means that if your technology can solve this problem then it can be replicated elsewhere also so identify that real problem which will improve their quality of life and for that you cannot just identify by just going and watching you have to connect with them you have to talk to them you have to go down to their level and be empathetic and understand then only you can connect with them usually they throw you out i tell you because i have faced so many um, of this throwing out cases uh and after you connect with them and you become a friend of them you can identify this real problem and uh, you can make them understand that there is a possibility of improving the quality of life by solving this problem they won't believe it at the first uh, instance you will have to tell them again and again there is a possibility and there if there is a possibility then you have to start the action it is not possible for you to do it alone so get hold of some collaboration either for the funding or for the technology or even for manpower so some kind of need will be there for your uh, uh, problem solving and now it becomes a social innovation you can use it for this community you can use it for another community and you can even make it into a business for your own life however it is it becomes a social innovation now what are the areas in which social innovation can be uh, implemented there are hundreds of areas i am taking only four of them where i have implemented something education being an educator that is my easiest part so i took education as my uh, first um first way of improving the quality of life then there is energy and electricity environment health care and all these things has to come only when you connect with the community and if there is only a need otherwise it becomes just a business not a social innovation so if you take the innovation i found that it is necessary for the computer to be uh, to to become a part of the life especially in the rural places it becomes a necessity for them it becomes also a social innovation if you can provide through some means a sustainable computer education or computer literacy so we started with a small um training program for the rural girl students uh, especially from the um, government schools where the children were really uh, interested in uh, uh, learning about the Uh, computer and uh, one of the student branches nearby also became our partner and we started this uh, as the first project of sangamam project and under this we conducted uh, the first workshop in uh, 
and we were astonished to see not only those girls but their teachers also were interested and they also sat through the whole workshop for 5 days and this gave us the courage to approach the uh, institute coimbatore institute of engineering and information technology to provide uh, computers for this school and they were also inspired by the interest of the students as far as the teachers so they provided two computers to the uh, uh, school and it started from there it was only a start and after that now it is um, uh, it has become a full fledged computer lab for that school uh, it is maintained properly and the project is also continuing with the help of the their own students they are not coming to the computer institute of engineering and information technology uh, coimbatore institute of engineering and information technology but they are doing it on their own itself the next one is um i that was the time the global warming was thought about um, elaborately so we just started with a small outreach program for the rural uh, school children to think about this uh, global warming and we asked them to prepare one or two projects and we made it to, into a project competition you wouldn't believe it when we arrived on the day of the competition we were astonished to see the whole school was involved in the project competition and even the um, kindergarten students they had some of the posters and other things to show and talk about and every one of the student in the school was involved and uh, thinking that it will take 2 uh, or 3 hours for us to uh, go through the project and uh, probably award uh, uh, the best uh, project or one or two projects um, finally we had to stay the whole day and uh, after that also it became just uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, an inspirational storytelling event for us Uh, which encouraged us to conduct uh, more competitions later so this was uh, the amount of interest that is uh, that is shown by the school students as well as the school authorities so uh, when the next um, uh, institute called siddhaganga institute of technology the girls approached me saying that uh, there is a tribal village in karnataka nearby to tumkur uh, saying that uh, they don't have electricity they they haven't had electricity at all there are no uh, electric lines and uh, till now there is no electricity and i was uh, uh, i was really uh, wondering how these people lived without electricity and i asked them uh, how is it possible ma'am uh, they sleep at 6 o'clock that's it then why do they need the electricity right now right now some of the children have started going to the school and these school going children have to walk nearly 5 miles to reach their school and come back after coming back they naturally play and by 6 o'clock they sleep they don't do the homework and this prepare this uh, uh, makes them unprepared for the next day class which makes them drop out of the school and we want to stop that school dropouts from dropping out of the school and that is why we want to uh provide them with electricity i was really inspired by the um the forethought of the students so i said okay and there should be something for you out of it what is the learning that you are going to do and they wondered what they can do i said why don't you wire all the houses you take the help of an electrician being electrical students you can also learn wiring and uh, uh after that we will see i will provide the materials but i will not provide the labor uh, uh, cost they agreed for it and there were 15 houses and these children they wired the whole thing with the help of uh, the electrician from siddhaganga institute of technology and seeing their interest the institute itself took steps to bring electricity through the government authorities and it even made to the papers you can see because it was a student project supported by the most influential siddhaganga institute of technology so uh, these 15 houses now have electricity the next project i implemented was for the environment uh, it was for a, a place called thonda uh, uh, tandalam tandalam near chennai which is a green village but 
they didn't have any uh, kind of agriculture they were working in a glass factory and uh, uh, only women were working the men were just enjoying and the school uh, there was a school but the school did not have children because the children didn't want to go to the school what can you expect when the women are working and the men are not doing anything so um, we went to them and we uh, got hold of the the counselor there uh, then the self help group there and uh, we slowly introduced the kitchen garden for them for the women saying that it will be beneficial for them to have uh, uh, their own vegetables and uh, the health of their family is going to improve you wouldn't believe it within one and a half years they had a full fledged kitchen garden producing vegetables which was uh, which was actually um, too much for them and uh, these too much vegetables were uh, dried and uh, we uh, gave them an idea to do it as an entrepreneurship Uh, to sell it but they didn't want to do it so they wanted to dry it and uh, then uh, uh, reuse it so uh, they started some of the people actually started the entrepreneurship also but most of them reused it but they were also happy that they they used their own vegetables and we taught them something called uh, smokeless chula and fireproof thatches because everything was thatch uh, uh, roofs and uh, they said usually fire is the only enemy for them so we um, explained to them the simplest way how fireproof thatches can be built and the next environment the entrepreneurship uh, uh, program i gave was in coimbatore this is again nearby to uh, pollachi and uh, this is with the help of the Uh, eco green unit of the tamil nadu agricultural university where uh, you can see the coir pit mm, the coir pit was used for making toys so this was the training we provided for the women and they had to mix it with latex press it or mold it into the shapes and uh, wind silk thread over it but the problem was the, being women they found it very difficult after latex has been mixed to press it and mold it into the proper shape they could not uh, give enough pressure so our students from kumaraguru college of technology they developed this machine which could uh, automatically uh, mix the latex as well as the coir pith and mold it into whatever mold we give and provide it so that the women can just uh, wind the silk thread over it so now it is with the eco green unit uh, they have made replicas of it and they are using it for uh, their own training and uh, this was also uh, an opportunity for our students to learn about uh, the actual uh, need for the community and work on it and after that we started with um, providing this opportunity for all the uh, children uh, the next uh thing we thought about was the disability so we started with an international conference uh of uh, uh, for uh, uh, especially the uh, special needs people and in uh, that special needs people we had uh, uh, of course we had uh, invited people from seven countries and uh, they gave wonderful uh, speeches but apart from that we also gave two workshops one was by the california state university northridge uh, they taught about the um, the the uh, most uh, most international uh, kind of wheelchair they had developed for their brown center it was a it was a really inspira- inspirational uh, workshop and the second workshop was by the kovey medical center hospital uh, the paramedical services that is the occupational therapy unit uh, head um, Uh, dr sujatha misal she gave a great uh, uh, workshop on how technology really helps them uh, treat their patients more and that gave us the idea that they would really welcome us when we want to use our technology for the uh, for finding the solution for their people and uh, with the help of uh, uh, the kovey medical center hospital we created uh, one more uh, uh, project also 
and this is uh, upa brahmam this is actually one of the projects by sampath uh, uh, sampath kumar veeraraghavan you uh, most of the people know about him uh, in 2004 uh, when he was doing the undergraduate he did uh, the autism screener system for the uh, the artistic children from madram narayanan center for exceptional children and uh, uh, for this we wanted to deploy it in uh, the government and we went to the government first and uh, it was not possible because we could not uh, meet them and uh, talk to them and finally um, uh, of course uh, we took the help of uh, other people dr abdul kalam also helped us and uh, uh we could uh, actually deploy it in the other uh, 32 districts of tamil nadu and uh, he was uh, provided the ms uh, uh, on the basis of his uh, humanitarian technology uh, by dr karen panetta and uh, he completed his ms uh, uh, in a continuation of the humanitarian technology and myself uh, and one more person from uh, <coughs> intel were the examiners for uh, his ms thesis and uh, at the end he was also um, recruited by the intel people uh, and we had uh, uh, one more uh, project called writing aid for the dyslexic children because if you know uh, dyslexic children usually they um, they don't have fine motor perception as well as the gross motor perception which affects their ability to hold the pen and the pressure they apply on the pen uh, has to be communicated through the brain signals and there is a problem in communicating this it might be like uh, the signals are intermittent and because of that uh, they usually don't hold the pen properly and the writing also is very bad that is different but uh, um, the pen also falls down so to help them with uh, understanding that there is going to be um uh, the pen has uh, pen is going to fall down we developed one writing aid using a microcontroller which will uh, indicate that there is going to be um, a pressure loss for the pen as soon as the pressure loses it will give a um, sound uh, an alarm for the child to hold the pen tightly and the next uh, this was actually um, done in 2007 uh, a gate corrective walking mat which was developed for the srm hospitals and this uh, mat was for the epileptic children the training of the epileptic children to walk correctly is very difficult because of the imbalance uh, that is uh, there in their structure itself and we designed this for the paramedical unit of the srm hospitals uh, where Uh, this is again a mat with the sensors where the, if the child walks on it it uh, just plays music continuously and if uh, the a child is not able to walk properly straight and uh, if he steps out of the mat in, in a way anyway then immediately a screaming sound will come alerting the child as well as the caretaker so this was uh, uh, the first one actually uh, which was commercialized and which was uh, used for the uh <clears throat> the society it was uh, meant for and the next uh, from the kove medical center hospital uh, the connection with them we visited uh, them and found out what their problem was and we developed this afo that is uh, you might have heard about a problem called foot drop which is a neuro disorder which sets in just before the paralysis and uh, uh, it is like the people who are um, affected with this kind of foot drop cannot hold their foot perfectly straight and because of that usually it drops uh, making a slap on the floor so when they walk it just slaps on the floor before they intend to walk which gives them a pain and to avoid this pain they try to drag their foot and uh, that also gives them a hip pain so with all these problems they were suffering and uh, uh, sujatha misal she told me that uh, if you can find something if you can do something for these people i will be very grateful so we tried to do it <coughs> approach it just in a very basic manner where 
uh, we just put a sensor uh, to uh, understand whether the the person who is walking is holding his foot straight or not which means that if the person uh, is not holding it straight it drops then the uh, flex sensor which actually measures the angle of uh, the foot drop uh, if it is more than 90 degrees it automatically means that, that there is going to be foot drop then immediately the sensor will uh, make the foot uh, uh, horizontal by moving the uh, foot that's that is the basic model which we developed uh, in 2014 and after two years now uh, we have actually patented the design with hybrid technology because uh, we have not used the basic model alone. This is only a concept proof. But after that, we have uh, reduced the power consumption with the help of the hybrid technology and patented it in 2019. Next one is uh, the smart agriculture, which was uh, a project uh, funded by the IEEE Foundation. Uh, to help the people, uh, the agriculture people of uh, Kaimbatur district. And uh, this was to um, bring the technology to the farmers. So technology supported farming was our goal, objective. And we created a website and also a mobile app to help them understand the basic needs. And this is actually connected with the Tamil Nadu Agricultural University and also the Indian Council for Agricultural Research. So they can connect with them anytime and uh, they can get uh, uh, advices for uh, their own personal uh, farming problems. But at the same time, the best practices are also available on the website. Uh, there is a forecast, a weather forecast, which will uh, advise them uh, for uh, understanding what is the best time for them to um, seed and uh, uh, for, uh, harvest. And these are all some of the uh, indications uh, for them to uh, give them a helping hand. That is it. <clears throat> and apart from that, uh, we also conducted the awareness programs so that uh, the consumers can be connected with these farmers. So that straight uh, uh, connection between them will help them uh, market their producers to the consumers easily rather than giving it through an intermittent uh, uh, people. So these intermediaries are eliminated with the help of the mobile app. And right now we have around uh, 600 farmers connected uh, uh, with each other and uh, with the consumers also. They can, uh, uh, they can show their producers and uh, fix their prices and uh, uh, they can connect with the consumers. Uh, so this is the map data. This is uh, one of a very interesting projects. Uh, actually, we went to a place called Kembanayakan Palayam, which is near to Coimbatore. And uh, this Kembanayakan Palayam, uh, uh, we actually went there uh, just to just for an outreach project to meet the uh, uh, school children there. But we came up with another problem where they said their water is filthy and there is no uh, indication that why the water is filthy because they are getting the uh, water from uh, a bore well which is uh, around uh, two miles away but there is a tobacco uh, factory nearby probably the tobacco water seeps in uh, but whatever it is the water uh, smells differently at first after six hours of standing, the smell of the water intensifies and you cannot consume it. And whatever they cook out of it, it doesn't stand for more than four hours, it spoils. So these people are um, daily wages people, which means that they cannot go for mineral water or bottled water or anything. And uh, uh, this gave us an idea, why can't we um, interfere and find out what is uh, uh, actually making the water that filthy. So we took a sample from them and uh, tested it in our uh, biotechnology lab. And uh, finally, we had to make it into a project itself. And we selected some 17 items. These 17 items are all biofilters. Uh, which are uh, either seeds 
or uh, vegetable waste or uh, tree barks or uh, dried leaves whatever it is all are biofilters and with that every one of the filter uh, we check the water and uh, uh, we filtered it and uh, rechecked it and uh, uh, within 6 months we were able to find out that the moringa seeds were the best for this particular uh, water to um, lengthen the life of the water now the water actually stands uh, good for 12 hours and uh, the cooked food also stands for 8 hours that that was the limit we could do but even that was an improvement for those people so they have just started using this moringa seeds as a filter as soon as they get the water from the uh, pump the next thing is um, with all these projects which we have been doing for uh, uh, a small group of students it was also necessary for us to share it with everyone how the social innovation can bring up the quality of life to some community so we started this ss12 international project competition uh, in fact this was uh, uh, given to us by um, by uh, another group of ss12 uh, from california uh, and they uh, started it in 2007 i think and they started it uh, just for uh, just as a hackathon a saturday sunday hackathon and uh, uh, that was for only uh, special needs assistive technology uh, for people with special needs and uh, uh, but we started it as an international project competition in 2013 uh, between two countries only uh, india as well as uh, bangladesh and uh, uh, in 2000 <coughs> in 2019 it was renamed as ss12 because it was no longer under the structure of uh, ss12 so we completely changed uh, the whole structure but still the ss12 international committee also are uh, are uh, on the advisory for our board so these are some of the glimpses of uh, the ss12 now considered as ss12 uh, you can see uh, the the speakers as well as uh, the guests who have uh, adorned our uh, previous ss12 so 2016 2017 uh, 2016 was in coimbatore 2017 finals we conducted it in uh, uh, hyderabad uh, that's where tessy thomas was uh, uh, was the guest and in 2018 we did it in uh, sri lanka uh this uh, sri lanka was uh, uh, a little more uh, intensified because we had around uh, more than uh, nine countries uh in 2019 we we changed the name as ss12 uh and uh, we conducted it in stamford international university thailand and uh, there the number of countries uh, uh, was uh, still increased as uh, 13 but this 13 was only the pilots i'm talking about apart from that uh, we had also uh, increased the number of tracks so for the virtual track we had uh, six more countries which made it as nearly 20 so the innovation challenge is one track where we have pilots all over the world right now uh, this for this year we had around 47 uh, pilots all over the world then make a fair is the one where uh, uh, the students are expected to bring out a, a product quality product quality project then junior einstein is for the school children because uh, for the first 2016 uh, uh, ss12 one school child wanted to participate and i am very happy to say that he was from kerala so he came and um, he participated in the ss12 along with uh, the engineering students he competed with them when i told him that uh, it will not be possible for him to compete with the engineering students he said at least let me try ma'am so i would like to come so i was really inspired by this child so i started this junior einstein track uh, for the school children and then the virtual track is for the people who cannot actually travel to the place where we are conducting the finals and this we power track is the final one uh, this was introduced for the world bank uh, 
because the world bank is now interested in uh, increasing women representation in um, uh, power and energy sector and for that we introduced the power track and uh, this was the 2019 uh, uh, ss ss12 uh, where we had around uh, uh, 600 people uh, totally along with the organizers uh, the participants and uh, or, uh, the committee members uh, from uh, uh, 30 countries, I would say. So SS12 2020, as everybody knows, we could not uh, do it uh, physically. So finally, we had to uh, make ourselves satisfied with the uh, virtual mode. But this gave us one more opportunity. So we conducted so many uh, programs where we were able to reach out to many countries, even from South America. So now we have a pilot in Peru um, South America <coughs> and Japan also. So we are really um, expanded ourselves uh, from east to west because of the pandemic. Uh, and this year, again, uh, we have reached out to around 6,000 people from um, uh, uh, 40 countries. And uh, uh, finally, we have conducted the finals this month on 8th, 8th of uh, uh, November. I'm very happy to say that uh, uh, the quality of the projects we encountered, it was amazing, amazing. Even with uh, the amount of, uh, you know, what to say, uh, amount of difficulties they had uh, in connecting with uh, some of the team members. So now this is for actually bringing out an impact out of it. I have actually published a paper on this. I have uh, calculated the data on social impact projects. How many of the uh, students actually made their career on the basis of their projects? And uh, some of them um, with the surf service associations. And when I compared them, I could make the conversion rate as for the social impact projects, the career um, improvement or uh, the the people who actually make their career on the basis of their project because they love the project. They love what they have done. That is more. So, which means that we really have engineers, not engineering graduates. Uh, there have been so many international collaborations uh, because of uh, this assistive technology from uh, different areas, different uh, countries. We have signed an MOU with uh, the California State University Northridge because they have an ME on assistive technology. And uh, now they are uh, doing uh, uh, one course for uh, Kumaraguru College of Technology and providing the certificates from the uh, California State University itself. And um, uh, one more uh, event was the EPICS uh, uh, and the education fair, which I conducted in 2014 especially for the uh, uh, engineering uh, projects, particularly uh, for the Indian uh, people. And uh, with the help of uh, all these projects and all these uh, social networking, as, uh, uh, as I was introduced, I, uh, I got so many awards. I could uh, network with so many people around the world. So I'm very thankful to IEEE and IEEE members, IEEE volunteers who have uh, actually helped me uh, reach through it. So if there are any concerns for people who want to do a social innovation, I have one say, which was actually told by Dalai Lama. If you think you're too small to have an impact, try going to bed with a mosquito in the room. When a mosquito can have an impact to stop you sleep for a whole night, naturally you will have an impact on a whole community. So thank you so much. I'm ready to answer questions now. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would say that your experiences that you've shared is really valuable and thank you so much. And it's really influential and we will, we will look forward to coming up with such good events. And oh, thank uh, even you. you, you and you also mentioned about the necessity of uh, conducting or maybe uh, I, I'm saying about the um, value based engineering that we can have that uh, how we can benefit the society. It's True. really good, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, ma'am, can we move on to a question answer session now?
Yes. Okay. Uh, before the, moving on to the question answer session, I would also like to request everyone to uh, fill in the feedback forms. And those who have registered will be receiving the recordings as well. And in the feedback form, please do mention if you guys, uh, all of you require the certificates also. So, yeah. So moving on to the question answer session. Firstly, uh, first question. Your journey through uh, socially relevant engineering is marvelous. Many times engineers across are found to be socially disconnected, though, though, uh, though uh, they have a wealth of experience and knowledge. In your opinion, how can this be bridged? Okay. As far as I'm concerned, I believe that every one of uh, uh, the person born is empathetic towards, their, um, towards the people around them. So naturally, uh, on uh, when we uh, move out, when we go for our degrees and when we go for our uh, education, we forget about all these things because we have been pressurized to um, go for the, the same kind of activities again and again and again. You have to study, you have to write an assignment, you have to write an examination, then you have to pass, that's it, finish and then go for the next semester. Forget about what you have learned during the previous semester. That has been our program. We have been programmed to accept that, come out of that program because it is not enjoyable. We are not uh, really doing anything. It is not meaningful at all. So the first thing you need to do is look around you, whether people are all happy. I don't think so. There are people who cannot be happy. That is different. But the people who want to be happy, are they really happy? And if they are really happy, definitely you can find out from them what kind of, uh, um, what kind of medicine they are taking, I would say. So for me, it was an eye-opener when I encountered... Um, something like a disability, I would say, in my family itself. So every one of us needs something to hit on our head and say, hey, come on, it is your duty to find out what can be done. So that was my eye opener. But even before that, we had started working on this just by the help of uh, uh, students. The, the biggest problem right now, every one of us is facing, we are not talking to our friends. We are just chatting to them. Please talk to them. Please talk to them. It needs to be like, you have to be with them. You have to understand them. You have to be empathetic. And talking to each one of them might give you an idea. And that will really make you a, a real good person and not very many of them will be interested in becoming a good person it doesn't matter but at least let us enjoy what we are studying let us do it meaningfully and for that we need to understand that so the first thing is look around start listening start listening to the people even if they are not talking to you go and talk to them and ask them to uh, share something with you so that is the first thing you can do. And uh, uh, of course, it will be very difficult for you when you have a, a completely tight schedule. It doesn't matter. You can drop some of them. You can go for this because this is going to be very meaningful for you. I, I think I answered the question, correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, next question. Ma'am, your innovative techniques to cater to the needs of various sections of society are highly commendable. So what I understand you. from your uh, activities is that the basis for all these is a sense of social awareness, which every one of us should develop for the betterment of the quality of our lives. Sure. What is your opinion on this? Yes, yes, definitely. That's what I have been telling. See, I will tell you one thing. In 2002, when I started the IEEE student branch in my um, college, some of the children came to me and said, why don't we start women in engineering? Uh, my students actually inspire me so much. So I never say no to them. When they said, okay, we will start, but what is women in engineering? See, see, that was the first 
uh, time I had heard about women in engineering and they said there is something called women in engineering and uh, we can go for it so that uh, we can also do some outreach activities for the school children because they were actually thinking that we have come to the engineering part and the engineering as such is not very, very inspiring because it is again, just like the school where you had to mug up everything and then um, uh, go for the examination and finally forget about it and come and start fresh. But they said, ma'am, the uh, children are really suffering because there are not many trained teachers in uh, some of the rural schools. And I came to know that uh, I was aware of it because I had worked in uh, rural colleges and I never thought about the rural schools at that point of time. And I was really inspired by the, by the thinking of the children. I said, okay, why don't we start doing it? If there are no trained teachers, you are all trained teachers. Now you can teach them. You know, even now, every year, my students prepare at least 10 projects, either on the Newton's um, laws, some physical laws and chemical laws, and they have something to show, not the actual example that is given in the book, but something related to engineering, which will explain to them how that law will work. And when we go to the rural schools and explain to the children, so this is what uh, you have studied as Newton's first law. You see how this is moving and the Newton's law is proved and you see the spark on their faces. Oh, it's lovely to see. So this kind of projects every year we do and we go to a nearby um, school, um, some school and we teach them. So this gives the the students the engineering students also a different way to think about what they are actually studying at the same time they also are able to um, make out into as if they are teachers to the younger children see the younger children listen to the elder children rather than the teachers better so this works for everybody so this is one way of doing it this is the simplest thing that you can do you can go to a nearby school and teach them about whatever laws they are studying with an engineering exam. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, <coughs> that was indeed uh, a really helpful uh, knowledge to get. And uh, we can also look forward to developing them. And ma'am, next question. Uh, the your perseverance uh, is admirable, she said, comments. And then, oh, thank you. Uh, can you sh share with us how you handle rejections when people don't want uh, or don't appreciate what you want to do uh, for the vulnerable or the underprivileged? Okay, right. Yeah, I told you, you have to be ready for uh, uh, people kicking you out. I've encountered so many kickouts, you know. The first time we went to that Tandalam Gramam, for uh, the Sangamam project, they just uh, kicked us out. They said, no, we don't need you and all. I know you people will come and uh, you just take some photos and go away. All these things we know, come on. And again and again, we went there. And finally, we went to one of the persons who is a little influential. She was the the... Uh, kind of head head for the self-help group there. So we thought that uh, all the women will listen to her. And these women, if they are listening, we were not very much worried about the men because they were not doing anything anyway in that uh, uh, village. So women were the only responsible people do, we were, uh, who were actually working in the glass factory and working at home and uh, taking care of the children. So we thought that if we can correct the women to think for themselves as well as the family, then we would have achieved whatever uh, we wanted to do. And at that time, that was the first uh, uh, two to three years of uh, our outreach projects. So we didn't have much idea on how much we can actually do. So we just gave them some ideas about how they can protect their houses, how they can increase their uh, income 
and how they can actually uh, work at home rather than uh, going for the glass factory and all so that and uh, natural resources the natural resources that was available in that village was going to waste so we wanted to actually make them understand that those natural resources are to be used by them and that will really give them a, a better a valuable life so that was the first thing uh, we wanted to tell them and uh, once they encountered uh, dr radha murali who was an environmentalist oh my god she is amazing she talks to them in their own language and she makes them understand she makes them come behind her so that was the way we could actually reach out to them so this is one way perseverance perseverance is the only way uh, when you get rejection that is one one way of doing it and how you handle it because usually you get demotivated when you face some rejection yes when i face some rejection i am demotivated the first um, not the first time every time i get uh, a rejection i get demotivated and that gives me uh, a lot of sadness for uh, some time but i am a very positive person and if i am very uh confident that what i'm doing is correct i'm not doing anything wrong i'm not uh, <clears throat> doing something which will actually um uh, spoil the territory or environment or the livelihood of the people then i have nothing to fear about so so these things i self motivate myself and i think that whatever i'm doing is wrong if these people are really blessed to have my support then they will understand it so i am believing that they have they have that kind of blessing so let me try it one more time if they don't i will find another person who has that kind of blessing so as far as i am concerned when i am doing nothing wrong when i am not hurting anybody why should i bother so whatever i am doing i am doing for the people let me continue do it if people can understand let them continue if they don't understand it's their own uh, difficulty it's their own uh, uh, what to say uh, loss so i am not bothered about it so that way uh, you have to self motivate yes ma'am yes ma'am that's that's a very good thing and we need to look up to everything in that aspect only when even whenever we start to look at an initiative we should always have that in mind as well yes the next is a question um how much of inbuilt assistive technologies are available in various operating system platforms in use worldwide i'm sure uh, i repeat i i'm not able to understand what is that yeah okay how much of inbuilt assistive technologies are available in mm -hmm. various operating system platforms worldwide okay um i think the question is uh whether there are uh, uh, different uh, assistive technologies in different platforms because uh, many of the people will be using different uh, operating systems so whatever is available whether it is versatile for all the operating systems see uh, assistive technology is not one technology one thing it depends on the need for the person i actually introduced uh, the curriculum for assistive technology and i taught it for 2 years in uh, kumaraguru college of technology and in that you will see that this assistive technology devices once they are developed they are uh, uh, converted into mainstream technologies once people find a use for it so mostly the assistive technology device if it is created in one operating system if it is uh, created with uh, one technology it doesn't stay there itself if people start finding it useful then it will be converted into different uh, uh, operating systems and uh, technologies and some some time after it becomes a mainstream technology also which means that uh, it will be available to even people without special needs a normal person also uh, for example Uh, around uh, 10 years back uh, some of my student not 10 years 7 years back some of my students developed uh, mobile apps for uh, 
especially the blood bank and uh, some of the services in our college and now everything is in mobile app so uh, at that time it was really big for uh, um, something to be available on a, a mobile app but now the mobile apps are for even for uh, a feedback for a form so that way it is going to be <clears throat> going to become a mainstream technology uh, once people find a use for it so uh, you can you can mention one particular device whether it is available in this platform in this platform it is available um, mostly uh, in in the internet you can search for it thank you ma'am uh, next uh, is a question from francis joseph uh he provides training on innovation and he has visited more than 10 innovation centers and three social uh, innovation centers in toronto but uh he says that uh, we did not see much interest in activities in kerala and maybe india also so how can we improve the situation okay that's a wonderful question and uh, that was the main reason i started this uh, uh ss12 because i thought that this assistive technology once i tested with my students and i found that the students are so much interested in uh, creating something uh, with an assistive technology by creating a meaningful project rather than just uh, uh, bringing something as a final year project and presenting it and getting a degree they were really um, interested in doing something once they are introduced to this uh, assistive technology projects i started <clears throat> i started doing it for my own students and uh, without uh, uh, saying that uh, it is necessary for the other children also we started this ss12 and you can see that the number of uh, countries increasing in the participation and the the whole uh, ss12 from the beginning to now it is only for uh, on uh, social innovations only so the theme is under the uh, sustainable development goals of uh, united nations so the children from anywhere in the world they can take a sustainable development goal which is relevant to their country and find a community where this uh, goal is really necessary and they can develop a project so that way we have uh, created it in such a way that the students also will have the need to go to the community talk to them and find out uh, whether there is a need and then come back with a solution and implementing it and uh, presenting it and i'm proud to say that uh, uh, many of the children who were winners of our uh, ss12 from 2016 onwards uh, every one of the winners have become entrepreneurs they have commercialized their products some of them have actually incubated but they have not actually uh, done a startup but uh, three of them have a startup also for uh, their uh, thing so this actually increases uh, their interest towards the engineering by providing a career path also many of the uh, the engineering children they are not interested in doing this project because they don't find it really useful for their career they know that they can go to an it company and uh, start working there and finally they, there is no connection between these two but now it is not the case now the students really demand something which is meaningful which is enjoyable and which they want to really see something tangible and i think that's a very good uh, uh, change and this kind of competitions the government also has started uh, uh, now giving out to the younger generation <coughs> the companies like um, uh, microsoft intel uh, and uh, even what is that uh, uh, steps uh, texas instruments they also have that kind of uh, uh, competitions and with these competitions it is really possible for us to bring more of the uh, children towards meaningful engineering careers i can see uh, from my ss12 participants that people are really working towards bringing out uh, uh, something meaningful for their project so i'm sure the the scenario is changing yes ma'am uh, and uh, the, the, that's all with the questions uh, so there is a comment in the chat box i would like to read it to you 
The social projects that your team has involved is an eye-opener, especially for the student engineers to will be inspired to focus on social impacts of their work in the course of their career. Most require multidisciplinary learning, which has been diminishing over the years. Thanks for the great talk. So I felt it that it was an indeed uh, a good comment that you have put on. And that's what I am. Uh, it was really good to hear a lot from you. And uh, we got to know what all innovative things we can do on later on. Um, even as uh, being a Carolite or being an Indian, we all would also like to develop uh, our contribution from our country. Sure. Uh, yeah. So uh, we no, also... you are actually leading. I would I would say uh, because I uh, learned a lot from you when uh, your uh, Kerala section became the forerunner for uh, creating the. Uh, uh, connection for the floods, connection for the people and uh, the, the relief work for the people with the government of uh, Kerala. It was excellent. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah. So, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, I would like to inform all of you that uh, the Google Forms have put in the chat box. I had seen a comment uh, that uh, people haven't received the feedback forms yet. So the form has been put in the uh, chat box. So please see to it. And so as we come to an end of uh, today's talk, I would like to uh, request Dr. Krishna Kumar of the Project Management Institute Kerala chapter to give the vote of thanks. Can we have you, sir? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, good afternoon to all or good evening to all. I'm Dr. Krishna Kumar, president of uh, PMI Kerala chapter. On behalf of the... Uh, uh, the Inter-Society Collaboration Initiative. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to Professor Ramalada uh, Marimuthu, the Professor IT Department of uh, uh, Anna University for delivering a very excellent session on assertive technology, a pathway to meaningful engineering. Your efforts to improve the quality of life of others through social engineering techniques are very fabulous and your efforts are really commendable. So we are so proud of you that uh, you are able to make a, a lot of uh, changes to people in, and their quality of life. Uh, volatility, uncertainty, and the complexity and ambiguity are the new norms now. And uh, the social engineering and the strategies to handle it and pivot it accordingly will make a human being a grand success. I'm sure the insights of Professor Ramalada Marimuthu has, uh, uh, which has been shared now which will benefit you and you can take uh, many of this great learning to apply in your day-to-day -day life. The one thing which I have taken myself uh, is uh, that uh, you should not have to chat with your friends or uh, close people who are there. You need to listen to them. That's one of the excellent learnings actually, which I have. Thank you, ma'am, for making that happen. Once again, I extend a heartfelt uh, thank you to you, ma'am, and we will look forward to interact you in the near future as well. Yes, thank you. I'm also looking forward to it. I would like to extend the sincere gratitude to Harindralal, uh, Fida Fatima, uh, Bhagisri, and Professor Sunita B.V. of uh, IEEE for handling these sessions extremely well. And finally, to each and every one of you to taking time in attending this session. Uh, thank you. And I'm sure that this session will be really inspiring for every one of you, and this will change your life going forward. Thanks a lot. Thank you so thank much. You, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, and once again, thank you uh, to ma'am, uh, because uh, as I said, it, the session was really inspiring. And uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so with this, we've come to an end of the 32nd talk of the Inter-Society Weekly Webinar Series. And next, we have the Inter-Society Weekly Webinar Series talk number 33. And it is on Hello English is astounding varieties of languages. And as we know, I feel the title is really interesting as well. So even I hope to hear a lot from the uh, title itself. And it is by Professor Shamla Sesidharan, PhD, and uh, who is a former professor at the Kerala University. It is on 25th November, Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. And I really hope all of you would also join to this. And as I said, I would like to once again remind all of you about the feedback forms. And uh, I sure, hope this uh, session was really interesting to all. And that's all. Thank you from my part. Thank you to all the attendees of uh, today's session. And ma'am, Ramlata, ma'am, once again, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank have you, ma'am. Have, have a nice day. Hope everything, yes. is, hope everything is fine there. Yes, yes. Everything is fine.
Thank you, Professor Ramalada Marimuthu. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, ma'am.